human beings were intended by God to know their identity. You see, it grounds us. It gives us confidence. Our sense of identity affects everything in our lives, from the choices that we make to the, the, to the beliefs that we live by. Now, although everyone agrees identity is important, not everyone agrees as to how to find it or what it is. Welcome to Life as God Intended. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, may I encourage you to do so. And I would also be grateful if you'd share these videos with your friends. Give us a thumbs up for this video and don't forget to push that notification bell. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the question section below. Why is identity so important to us? Why is it we are unable to rest until we know the big question, who am I? Who am I? Maybe you can relate to a, a period of questioning your identity in your journey of life. Many have longed to understand the answer to the question, who am I? And a corresponding question that often goes along with that question is, what am I going to do with my life? This questioning often begins as a teenager. Even those raised in the church uh, begin to question what they have believed, what they've been taught, and what their identity in Christ really is. Have you experienced the, the feeling of dissatisfaction with your life? Feeling like, you know, you were missing out on something? Well, the testimony of many who were confused about who am I caused them to start looking in many, many places, and often in all the wrong places, <laughs> and begin, began to listen, listening to the wrong voices, to quote-unquote find themselves, their identity, or who am I? Maybe you can relate. Along the way, your true identity in Christ maybe got a little foggy as you followed paths and people that looked promising, but led to disappointment. Maybe you were, uh, had too much confidence in a, a certain organization or church or spiritual leader only to discover some inconsistencies or failures in, your, in their life, and, and that began to cause you to question your own spirituality, your own identity. Maybe you chased after a promising career, success, good friends, and maybe a, just to have a great time and have a lot of fun. But in the process, began to experience a whole lot of pain, having kind of lost sight of who you were and maybe not really understanding who you were trying to find yourself. You see, it's in this state of confusion and also hurt, that no doubt you can feel like your life was spinning round and round, kind of out of control. And your search was getting nowhere that you actually wanted to be. You found yourself going in circles. You may have found yourself actually broken and desperate feeling empty and alone. And at that point, searching for the God of your childhood to find relief. You see, the question, who am I, is one of personal identity. Who am I equals what is my identity? 
The answer to who am I is our identity. Who I am gets to the heart of one of the most basic needs of our humanity, our need for identity. The reality is that everyone searches their entire life to know their identity because it's a God-given desire to know. And we will not experience peace until we understand who we are. Human beings were intended by God to know their identity. You see, it grounds us. It gives us confidence. Our sense of identity affects everything in our lives, from the choices that we make to the, the, to the beliefs that we live by. Now, although everyone agrees identity is important, not everyone agrees as to how to find it or what it is. Humanistic psychology suggests that our identity should be seen as an ongoing process rather than a snapshot of some static picture. That we should embrace a sense of self where we are perpetually rethinking and remaking ourselves. You see, they propose that instead of asking yourself, who am I, that we should contemplate who we want to be. Well, of course, this perspective is humanism, the big lie. The uncertainty of not understanding who I am produces a sense of inadequacy in many people. And as a result, many have sought to find their identity in their God-given personal abilities. For others, they try to find their identity in their personal associations. For others, and particularly Americans, we have looked to our personal possessions, materialism, to determine who we are and evaluate ourselves. But all of these are related to what you have rather than defining who you are. We might say that seeking after these things enhances a person's individuality. Every person is, of course, distinct and unique. We are obviously not carbon copies of each other. We do not think the same, nor do we act the same. Even when we become Christians, we still maintain personal individuality. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. God has created us with diversity. The old saying is that variety is the spice of life. We have differing personalities and each of us have idiosyncrasies and our own peculiarities. Still others would answer the question of who I am by social identities. Social identities are labeling that people use to categorize or identify themselves. Some common social identities include generation, race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, nationality, political affiliation, relationship status, professions, and social economic status. So you could see that these social identities are shaped by society. The false theory of personal resource is that man is a self-sufficient, self-producing, self-achieving being, an independent self. However, there is no such thing as personal resource. It is a big lie. You see, the evil one's the one who suggested that you too could be like God in Genesis 3, 5, introducing the lie that man could self-determine good and evil apart from God's character. 
And so fallen man has accepted the humanistic delusion that man can be his own god, and therefore he was susceptible to many false theories of identity. The reality is that God created you and I as derivative and dependent beings, always to be reliant on the Spirit of God by faith. So, what does determine the Christian's identity? Or, who am I? It might be better asked, who determines who you are? You see, when you were born into this world, you were born spiritually dead. You were born in Adam, the scripture says. You were born a child of God, Paul says, connected to Satan, a sinner by birth condemned. With no rescue, you would be destined for hell, an everlasting existence apart from God. But God. God made a way out. So as a Christian, you've been crucified with Christ, taken out of Adam, Adam, and you've been born anew, born from above into Christ's life. That is the miracle of your second birth. No wonder Jesus said, Marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again. By virtue of your second birth, you were rescued. Colossians 1.13, Paul says, For he delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. A new identity in Christ. Who did it? He did it. So what determines identity? The kind of spirit that you are joined to determines who you are. What determines that? One word. Birth. Birth determines identity. And for the Christian, Christ identifies you. The Christian's identity is established in identification and union in Christ. The Christian's identity is only in Jesus Christ. So what's the takeaway? Knowing who I am, I may now rest, live in peace, receptively walking by faith. We hope that you were encouraged and blessed by this video. We would love to hear from you and get your feedback and interact. If you have a testimony that relates to today's discussion, please share it below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our broadcasts. Be sure to check out our blog and our website, which is in the description below. And if you'd like to support our work financially, we have also provided the link. And until next time, may you experience life as God intended.